How much protein do you really need? I've been getting a ton of questions on this, so I'm here to break it all down. No fluff, just science. Protein has been a hot topic for years, but the recommendations can be all over the place. Some people say we're eating too much, others say not enough. And recently there was a meta-analysis published that may or may not change the game for protein recommendations in muscle building. To cut through all the noise, I've pulled together the latest research on how much protein you need each day, whether you're building muscle, maintaining strength, aging gracefully, or just trying to fuel your body the right way. Plus, I'm sharing a few tips and busting some common protein myths along the way. Let's dive into some of the latest protein research, specifically around muscle growth. But first things first, protein and strength training are a package deal. You can't just eat protein and expect your muscles to magically appear. You need resistance training to see those gains. Protein alone isn't gonna cut it. And if you've Googled how much protein you need for muscle gains, you've probably come across a wide range of numbers. Everything from 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight all the way up to three grams per kilogram of body weight. But here's the deal. The science has been pretty consistent. Most experts have agreed that for building muscle, the ideal range is 1.6 to 2.2 per day. Until recently, that is. A video from Renaissance Periodization came across my feed recently, and I had to take a look. Dr. Mike and Dr. Milo shared their take on protein research, and it sparked a lot of buzz. And let's be real, some pretty funny and cringy comments. Now here's where it gets interesting. A meta-analysis showed that anything over 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day didn't seem to provide any additional muscle gains. So hitting that 1.6, great, but beyond that, no real added benefits. Fast forward to 2022 and new research suggests that 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day might actually be the sweet spot for maintaining and building muscle strength when combined with resistance training. So the bottom line is if you're aiming to build muscle, a good target is between 1.5 to 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day, depending on your goals and how intense your training is. And don't forget, protein alone won't do the trick if you're not doing consistent resistant training. And protein isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. Your needs change based on things like age, activity level, and your overall health history. What works for a bodybuilder won't necessarily work for someone who's recovering from an illness or training for a marathon. So let's dive into why there is no single protein prescription for everyone. Let's take the common recommendation that's out there of 100 grams of protein a day, for example. You've probably seen it all over social media, right? But here's the problem. It assumes that everyone's body is the same, and that is far from the truth. And then there's this standard suggestion of 56 grams of protein a day for men and 46 for women. But who is this really for? These generic numbers don't account for your weight, your height, your fitness goals, your activity level, or your health. In fact, for the average American man, those numbers fall short of even the bare minimum recommendation to prevent deficiency. Protein needs vary widely, and the key is to understanding what works for you. So let's dive deeper into why context is everything when it comes to protein. All right, let's talk about the RDA, the Recommended Daily Allowance for Protein. The U.S. has set it at a modest 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. And here's where it gets tricky. The RDA isn't actually telling you how much protein you should eat for optimal health. No, it's the bare minimum to keep you from getting protein deficient. That's what it is. So while it's fine if you're just trying to survive, if you want to thrive, whether that's building muscle, getting in shape, losing weight, navigating the aging process, or managing chronic health issues, you're gonna likely need more than that. A 2020 study called out the RDA for what it really is, just enough to keep you from falling apart. The study found that eating more protein than the RDA actually helps adults build muscle, especially when the body is under stress, such as during resistance training or being in a calorie deficit, or when you miss one of my new YouTube videos that come out on Thursdays. You can't just coast on that minimum amount and expect to see results. Protein intake above the RDA is what makes gains happen, especially when you're putting your body under stress through exercise or dieting. We've talked specifically about building muscle, but let's also talk about athletes and just general exercising individuals, those that are working for endurance or a combination of cardio and weights. And when exercising, we need more protein to support muscle repair and recovery, especially if you're doing some high intensity training. 
the International Society of Sports Nutrition recommends protein intakes of 1.4 to 2.0 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day as the ideal range for maintaining muscle mass and supporting recovery. And think about it this way, those with the highest activity levels putting the most strain or stress on their bodies require the most protein for muscle protein synthesis, recovery, all those things, which is going to be the highest end of this range. It's like training for a 5K versus training for a marathon. The 5K can be around 30 minutes of running while the marathon can be more like three hours, a much bigger and much longer stress on the body. Let's talk about protein for older adults. For those who are 65 and older, protein needs get a noticeable bump, and this is for good reason. Studies show that higher protein intakes aren't just beneficial, they're game-changing for overall health, recovery from illness, and keeping that hard-earned muscle mass intact. In my time in working in long-term care, I saw firsthand how common sarcopenia, that gradual loss of muscle mass with age, really is. But the good news is that higher protein intakes may help slow down or even prevent that muscle loss and age-related sarcopenia many older adults face. So what's the magic number? 1.1 to 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day as the baseline for preserving lean muscle mass. But there's more. Observational studies hint that going up to 1.6 grams of protein per day might be even better. And if you're dealing with a chronic illness, your protein needs can climb even higher. The bottom line is for older adults, protein isn't just important, it's essential. As we talk about protein, there are lots of groups that have specific protein needs. I'm gonna touch on a few of those right now. If you're managing diabetes or aiming to control blood sugar levels, higher protein intake can be really impactful. Research suggests that consuming between 1.5 to 2.0 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day and never less than 1.0 can help stabilize blood sugar and improve overall health. If you're in that sweet postpartum period and exclusively breastfeeding, your protein needs are even higher. The demands of producing milk for your baby increase your nutritional needs and protein plays a big role in your recovery and your milk production. Aim for 1.7 to 1.9 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day during those crucial three to six months postpartum. Remember that your health is super important as you are taking care of your baby and healing, so don't forget to take gentle care of yourself. People recovering from illness or surgery. Recovery takes energy, and protein is a major player in rebuilding tissue, healing wounds, and fighting infection. If you're on the mend, your protein needs can shoot up to 1.5 to 2.0, depending on the severity of your illness or your injury. Protein isn't just for bodybuilders, it's for anyone who wants to fully thrive. If you fall into one of these groups, don't sleep on upping your intake, your body will thank you. Here's a biggie I see way too often. People cramming all their protein into one or two meals, usually around dinner, and skipping it at breakfast. Let me tell you right now, that's not how protein works. You can't just load up at dinner and expect your body to magically absorb it all, much less get all your protein needs in one meal. It's just not gonna work that way. Spacing your protein intake evenly throughout the day is key. Aim for a protein hit every three to four hours to give your body the best chance to use it and to give yourself the best chance to eat all the protein that you really need. This strategy helps your body synthesize protein more effectively, supports muscle repair, and makes hitting your daily goals a lot less stressful. And having protein as part of your snacks throughout the day can be helpful too. Specifically, post-workout nutrition, protein plus carbs are a total game changer for recovery. But that's for a whole other video. Drop me a comment if you wanna see a post-workout refill video, I'll make it happen. What happens if you don't eat enough protein? If you're not eating enough protein, your body will start breaking down muscle tissue for fuel. Long-term, this can affect your strength, your metabolism, and your overall health because protein's key for that repair, recovery, building, and maintaining muscle. Soon you would start noticing effects in more than just your gym gains. You'd have weak nails, thinning hair, and slower recovery from workouts. Those are all signs that your body is running on empty when it comes to protein. And it's not just about muscles. It's about keeping your body functioning at its best. Whether you're getting it from plants or animals, protein is crucial for your overall health, so don't underestimate its power. What about eating too much protein? Here's a myth I am happy to bust. The common thought is that eating too much protein can wreak havoc on your kidneys. But it turns out this is not the case, and research shows this. Eating too much protein will not harm your kidneys if you don't have kidney disease. An increased protein intake is actually associated with a lower risk of chronic kidney disease. 
But if your focus is only on protein, you will miss out on so much. Nutrients, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants are packed into all these other foods that are essential for not only our muscle building and athletic performance, but our overall health. Plus cutting out fiber rich foods can mess with your gut microbiome, which plays a huge role in your immunity, your mental health, and just overall feeling good. So let's recap the protein goals we discussed based on specific needs. If you're bodybuilding or training for strength, aim for 1.5 to 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. If you are an active athlete or exercising adult, protein intake should range from 1.4 to 2.0, depending on your training intensity and your goals. For older adults, 65 and up, aim for 1.0 to 1.2 to preserve muscle mass, with some studies suggesting up to 1.6 for even better results. For people with diabetes or blood sugar concerns, consuming 1.5 to 2.0 can help stabilize your blood sugar and improve your overall health. For my breastfeeding mamas out there, aim for 1.7 to 1.9 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. And if you're recovering from an illness or surgery, your protein needs can really skyrocket. They could increase to 1.5 to 2.0, depending on the severity of your recovery process. All these numbers I've shared today are based on the latest research and I've linked all my sources below. The biggest takeaway from this video is that protein isn't a one size fits all and finding the right amount for your unique needs and goals can make all the difference. Whether you're aiming to build that muscle, improve your athletic performance, or just feel your best. Now that you've got a solid foundation for understanding your protein needs, let's put it into action. Click the video on your screen right now to check out my high protein breakfast ideas. Perfect for starting your day strong. And I'll see you over there. Until then, eat well, be well, and thrive.